Welcome, Maria Cristina Munari. I think you are Italian architect, and uh, you are currently a researcher at the Solar Energy Laboratory of the Federal Institute of Technology, Lausanne in Switzerland. And you have a second uh, title, which is Invitated Professor at the University of Venice. On this conference, you were invited to hold a speech about architectural and solar, and you called it an integration channel challenge. So what is so challenging about integrating solar in architecture? Okay, so architecture is um, the capacity to control in the formal way um, the assembly of different technical elements that compose a building. So you make a building to answer to a function, and then you have to construct it through technical element. The difference between a construction and architecture is that in the architecture, the architect provides a formal coherency, so an aesthetic coherency, to the technical element put together. So when you add the solar elements, if we consider the importance of their size at the building scale, which is similar to the window opening, it is a challenge to be able to compose with these new elements for a new form of architecture. And the challenge is, is even higher when you, uh, when you go to uh, renovation uh, projects because the, the form is already there and you arrive with big elements that you have to be able to include in the composition of the building. So you um, created a term which is called integration quality. Uh, what do you mean with that? Integration quality <laughs> is not a simple issue. It is something that many people believe as being subjective. So the whole work we have done in our laboratory with my colleagues is in the definition of this quality. And we think that this quality is the sum of different qualities, the functional, the constructive, and then the aesthetic quality. And the one which is considered subjective in general is the aesthetic quality. So. We um, studied this and we came to a definition um, which is uh, a coherent composition of the different formal characteristics of the system, which are the geometry of the whole system, uh, the materiality of the system, which includes the color, the material, and their surface texture, and finally, the modular system that compose the system. So, the system is made of small elements with a certain size and a certain type of joints that interact with the other system modularity that compose the building, for example, the tiles. Is this um, a methodology which is used by architects or by building planners or urban planners? Actually, we are um, proposing this methodology to urban planners, to municipalities and also to heritage commissions that have to decide if a system is integrated enough in relation to the specific image they want to give to the city. So it is a qualitative methodology that uh, proposes to evaluate the coherence of the system and to see if this coherence level is adapted to the criticity of the specific city surface where the system is proposed to be. It's a little bit complicated. So maybe you can give us an example. What, what comes out of it? Is it a figure? Is it a color? Is it saying this is red, this is not good, this is green, this is good? What, what, what is uh, really the outcome for the urban planner? What we propose uh, is uh, to map the criticity of city surfaces in relation to their need of quality. Okay. So um, the criticity is the result of the visibility of a surface of the city from the public domain and the sensitivity of the context where this surface is placed. To translate this, this means in an industry surrounding, it's not so sensitive to have photovoltaics on the roof, but if you are in an old city center, it's more sensitive. This is your first argument. Yes, exactly. 
Okay? And on this, we can add that on a flat rooftop, a system is less visible than in a facade. So the need for quality is lower than in a facade. Toward the mapping of the criticity, we can uh, set um, the expectation toward quality. And so we can decide where our expectation can be kept low and where we have to concentrate so to be able to have good integration qualities. So for instance, the higher criticity will be in sensitive city center, for instance, in sensitive area, on very visible surface, on the facade of a church, for instance. You cannot, uh, if you want to go uh, to integrate the system there, you certainly have to be able to provide a quality of integration which is higher than if you are going to install a system on a flat roof of uh, an industry in an area which already has a very poor quality. That means that the, the uh, authorities of the community receive an instrument where they can um, judge their, their criteria on integration quality. And this may overall um, increases the acceptance of the population to accept uh, to see solar. Is this to simplify it? Yes, we can say that this is, this is somehow the way. The, the, the idea is that we avoid saying that there are forbidden surfaces where to install solar systems. So you can install it everywhere as far as the quality is adapted to the situation where you're going to intervene. That's the point. So we don't want to have bad integration in very visible area because we believe that this integration not only destroy the quality of the area, but they are not a driving force for solar. They, are more, uh, they lead more to the contrary and to the refusal of the population. So if you want to go in a very visible area and sensitive one, you have to go with a, an inspiring integration that will encourage people to do the same. And we have example of this, like the Aula Pierluigi Nervi in Vatican. So there are not forbidden area, but when you go to work in a sensitive building in a visible surface, you know that you have to be aware that you have to put the adapted effort. You cannot do it just uh, thinking at making the cheapest uh, uh, design project. Okay, thank you very much for the interview. Thank you very much uh, to you.